Hey everybody, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. It's been a while. Uh, donation link is up. If you are not aware of what's going on and why I'm back commentating, check out the previous video. Thanks for all the well wishes from everybody. This is going to be Gornich versus Jayun. Jayun's going to be playing White Protoss, usually Zerg player, top US Zerg, um, or at least in the top, amongst the top US Zerg and also amongst the top Zerg in the world outside of Korea. Uh, also top Zerg in the world outside of Korea, Gornich. This is a top 20 BSL preview matchup, and I'm hoping we actually see these two play in BSL as well. The original matchup I actually wanted was uh, G5 versus Jayun, and I was able to get my hands on this replay instead, but this is an excellent, excellent substitute. Because, first of all, shout out to the everybody in the Russian scene. You're really carrying all the foreigner scene right now. Also, I want to give everyone a preface. Doing all the replay grabbing myself, doing all the audio balancing. So if that's off, I apologize. We'll see how this goes. I might miss things. First, first cast back, we'll get it. Really quick before I say anything else, let me talk about the Zerg versus Protoss meta and how it has shifted recently. Really, the unless I missed something in the last month, which is very possible because the meta moves fast in Brood War, you got to stay on your toes. 973 has been the big recent build, and what that's kind of what that looks like is, is you get nine, they call it 973 because of the amount of drones you have at each expansion, but basically, you take a quick three bases, you get a bunch of Hydralisks, you go for an early bust. Or if you're not going for an early bust, you're going for a strong mid-game control with Hydralisks against your Protoss opponent. That's forced Protoss more into two base response play and really punished early Corsair play in particular. And we'll see what kind of shift that... I would actually say that the advantage is for towards Zerg a little bit in the meta. Maybe people disagree, but I feel like it's made it much more difficult for Protoss in this era in the early game in particular, and put a premium on getting early scouting information, things like that. Speaking of which, Gornish, upper right hand corner, going to scout that and come around. This is on Polypoid, if you are unfamiliar with the map. But Gornich, top Zerg in, outside of Korea in the world at many points of his career. Again, shout out to the Russian scene. Russ Brain doing a lot of the funding. And uh, of course, BSL production from ZZZ uh, Zero PL. Um, I got to say, yeah, the, the guys out in Russia are putting the rest of us to shame with everything they're doing. Ru the Russian cyber games is now, I, I would say, most people would agree, is the premier LAN event um, that's kind of overtaken the world cyber games. Although I'm, maybe it's not called the Russian cyber games anymore. Or they might have changed the name. Corrupted Cup is I, I, maybe... Anyway, uh, look for that. It's also incredible. BSL is where it's at. And I have to encourage people, yes, I know this isn't Koreans, but really what the way I feel is, yes, Koreans are still on top as far as Brood War goes, but because everybody has improved over this period of time, foreigner play has really elevated to something extremely entertaining and extremely watchable and extremely high level uh, as well. And I, I actually feel like the gap between Korea and the foreigners at least as far as the mid-level, the high-level amateurs to the professionals is smaller than it's ever been. Um, maybe people disagree, but we'll see. Second base going up, by the way. Uh, it looks like we saw, should have commented on this earlier, we saw an um, overpool-style opener to get early Zerglings out and probably deny scouting information. 12 o'clock, that's going to be the, the additional base. You can see June trying to find that third hatchery because it's critical to know where that's at to apply mid-game pressure. He's gone for a gateway cybernetics core opener in the interim. Um, anyway, I want to talk about Jayun and G5 a little bit. I really am hoping that's a matchup we'll see. And if... I, I uh, G5 dropped out, which I think was actually wise. He said he didn't feel like he was in condition to play Jayun, but I think it's more that when you play against G5 and when you play against Jayun, they are two of the most adaptable players. Like you can play one game against them, you might pick a game off. You can play two games against them, you might get two in a row. But if you consistently play against them, they adapt extremely rapidly, more faster than even many of the Koreans I've seen. Um, as far as like, you'll see an MSL match and it's like, they keep trying the same thing over and over again. You'd think by game three, they'd have it figured out. Uh, but these guys, it seems like by game, but by, by the second game, they're already making the major adjustments that are needed, uh, to shift things. The difference is, and it looks like you're seeing some zealot harassment at the 12 clock base. I feel like where Jayun or sorry, where G5, what he does is he'll 
kind of pattern is he'll look for a way to attack. He'll he'll analyze his opponent, look for a spot where he can attack, um, very cerebrally, very intelligent, and kind of adjust his builder to make it happen. And then he'll pattern the rest of his game around those kind of weak point opportunities. Zealot already has already doing some damage. It looks like he's going to be able to get one Zergling kill. This is what Zealots were born to do, by the way. Sit in a corner and take Zerglings down one at a time. Drone attack. I didn't even realize this was possible. Shooting through the mineral lines at the 12 o'clock. He's going to force it out of position, but he's still going to be able to getting another Zergling kill. Additional Zergling kills. And it looks like he might even get the drone. Drone's going to have to back off. But this is going to give that Zealot some additional scouting information for some additional Zerglings to be built. So a nice early game win. Uh, looks like some... I actually got a drone kill as, as well, wishing to move the camera right there. Finally getting taken out, but forcing a lot more Zerglings to be built. Also slowing mineral, mineral, mineral uh, production at that 12 o'clock base. Still no second gas from Gornich. It looks like he does have that single base, and he's got that Spire halfway finished. So rather than opting for Hydralix play, it looks like he's going to go for Spire play. Um, First Corsair is out. I feel like he's that Jayun's felt confident enough in that early game harassment and damage. Um, I'm not sure if he got a good look at, at seeing that second gas or not, where he can sneak away with that Overlord kill, be in a bit more of a defensive position and not have to worry about the mid-game. Looks like some Zealots are sneaking out. Weapons 1. And this is as Weapons 1 and Zealot Speed is finishing. And this is where I want to comment on Jayun versus G5. Jayun is kind of the flip side of that, where he's extremely cerebral. He's uh, he's always been one of those guys where even in the middle of a, a series of tournament matches, he'll sit back, he'll think about the build order he wants to execute, he'll figure out the timings, and he'll go from there. Corsair's at the natural. Two Scourge being built, but that's not... I think this Overlord's going to die before that rescue is there. Jayu needs to be careful, otherwise he's going to lose these two Corsairs, though. Zergling sneaking up. Nice SimCity from Gornich to try to deny positioning. It looks like, yeah, both Corsairs get taken out. That's going to be costly. But Zealots uh, dealing some damage at the natural aren't going to be able to sneak in just yet on this Sim. They are going to be able to end around. Creep Colony not quite down yet. And the drones are going to have to flee from the natural expansion. Hydralisks then uh, popping out. Looks like that creep going to get taken out. Uh, are we, we going to see zealots? Yeah, it looks like they're going to be able to disrupt uh, some mining here at the main. And Gornich having some trouble getting his economy running. Second gas is up, but Jayun's done a significant amount of harassment to be able to slow his Zerg opponent down. And this is what I was going to say with Jayun is I feel like, oops, um, actually moving my hands around in the background while... Also, let me know if the audio is off. <laughs> Still figuring it out as we're back. Templar Archive, Scythe Storm about halfway finished. More Corsairs being built. High Templar being built. Um, the critical thing about the 973 and the problems that Protoss have had, looks like we do have a Dark Templar out in the field, is being able to get that mid-game map control. And High Templar have been the preferred solution I've seen from mo most Protoss players. The problem with that, though, is once you expend that Psy Storm, you lose map control in the mid-game unless you've really devastated that Zerg army. And this is the other thing I love about Dark Templar um, in this mid-game. Even if they're not, even if they don't have the Corsair support to go ahead and take out drones, they can spot these Mutalisk armies just being invisible men out in the field. Three Corsairs in position. Looks like the High Templar. I don't think they... So Psystorm is just finishing. He doesn't want to drop a Psystorm over his mineral line, but Gornish isn't going to get a lot. And Cannon's just warping in. Because he's going to try to sneak in. Does manage to get a single probe kill, but he's going to have to back off with that much of a threat. Uh, Dark Templar maybe going to be able to sneak in. Weapons one has finished, by the way. Um, getting back to Jayun's playstyle, keep getting distracted by it. I feel like what Jayun oftentimes will do is, is he'll be the opposite side of G5, where he'll look for that nice defensive play. He'll be like, okay, how can I disrupt my enemy and go into a nice long-term kind of defensive cushion and get the big mid-game advantages uh, and then loft that into endgame? And he's just brilliant in that side of things. Uh, so if you do see a G5 versus Jayun matchup, I think that's going to be something special. Still excited about this one as I'm like, what, eight minutes in or something like that? I, nine minutes in and still talking about uh, both these guys' play style. I want to highlight Gornich here in the future, but I'm just going to start casting the game from this point on. <laughs> This amount of Mulisks does not do well against this minute, uh, this amount of Corsairs, so they're going to get chased down. It looks like um, some additional Zealots going to go ahead and try to run up, see if they what they can get done at that 12 o'clock. But I feel with this amount, uh, with these amount of units plus the unit mixture out in the field, that Gornich is going to be able to repel this. He's got a significant amount of drones, has had a nice set of defensive posturing, and I would actually give a slight advantage to Gornich here, despite the early game harassment. 
Um, the one advantage that Jayun does have is he's got weapons one, he's got weapons two on the way, um, and I think that is going to be ahead of any of the upgrades. The opposite side looks like that Dark Templar are finally going to get picked off, but not before, oh, nope, still going to be able to sneak out, but um, not before he was able to get some valuable scouting information. So critically, the one thing in Jayun's pocket is he is going to have um, that nice weapons upgrade. But uh, you got to be careful once once Zerg gets in a position where they just have that drone line established, and once they've got the the amount of gas they want, which is three gas, which looks like um, Gorn is just kind of sitting at here with that twelve o'clock expansion, Zerg gets dangerous. Um, it gets very very dangerous. Jayun going to go ahead and sneak out. He's going to try to take this inside three o'clock position. Gornich was anticipating that it was going to come at the six o'clock, and denying that currently with Zerglings. A little bit harder to defend because of the dual ramps, but still those dual ramps do make it a little bit scary um, to try to push in. Zergling's kind of pushing around. Jayun does have 44 drones himself. He does have a sizable army. He was able to force a lot of army production when I think Gornich really wanted to go for economic production. But critically for Gornich, he's kept... These Mules alive, they've regenerated a lot of health. They've got a significant Scourge army. Um, I'm not sure if I missed the Corsair. No, the Cor Corsairs are still hanging out. Looks like the Zergling's going to go ahead and yeah. Now he's going to go up, see that 3 o'clock base. He's going to lose a single Zergling. Nice turnaround. He's going to keep most of his Zerglings alive. And both players are going to go ahead and sneak back into a more defensive posture. Gornich going to go ahead and get his third, or sorry, his fourth base up. To If you're one base up as a Zerg player over your Protoss opponent, that usually means that you're doing well at least staying even and also, and oftentimes people would say slightly ahead. Uh, Jayun still hasn't established this mineral line and he needs to be, he needs to get a move on in that regard. Now starting to move out, hunting for army space, is able to catch some hydralisks as they're moving out of position. Looks like some mulisks are actually gonna dive in though with those Corsairs out of position and those, and this is the one critical thing is, is keeping those, those high Templar, ooh, losing some Corsairs critically there. You really need the Corsairs and the Dragoons with the High Templar to keep the High Templar alive. Jayun is lucky that he didn't lose any of those High Templar to these Mutalisks. That's really the role of the Mutalisks um, in the current meta is just to just um, sneak around, find gaps, find those High Templar that move so much slower than the rest of the army, pick them off so they can't expend all of this Psy Storm energy out. Jayun looking for a, this critical gap because this is very difficult to defend as a Zerg. Because your army gets clumped up in these corners and that just makes it Psy Storm bait. So Jayun's going to try to bait Gornich into some fights here that are advantageous where you can trade here. Gornich, I like this here where he's just plopped some Zerglings to deny additional expansions that might be coming in the interim. Jayun's trying to sneak in and again, you, he wants a clumped army to come out and meet him. But Gornich isn't taking the bait. He's keeping a nice umbrella clump here in between these bases. Uh, ooh. And also, I want to critically point out no observers out in the field. Also, Mutalis trying to sneak around, find those High Templar. So Jayun trying to position his army where he can get the High Templar to the front to sidestorm those lurkers. A little bit timid doing so with these Mutalisks sweeping around. You can see the Mutalisks still trying to grab some stragglers, uh, High Templar or, or otherwise, and they actually might be able to attack that uh, base. So Gornish really using a small amount of units that are highly mobile is able to catch a probe there to do it. Looks like Jayun getting... Uh, did have an observer out. Unfortunately, the observer dies really rapidly. Gornich losing some units to that Psy Storm and this pushing Dragoon force, but very easily able to defend it, actually using a bit of the position against Jayun um, counteractively. So you can just see through. I feel like, oh, I'm going to lose some Dragoons on the retreat as well. Uh, and Psy Storm just missing. So things not quite working out for Jayun the way I think he had hoped right there. He really wanted to catch, get some good army trades while he was establishing conditional bases. And instead, Gornich, using the threat of the Mutalisks to really put Jayun a little bit back, um, wasn't able to expend the storms. And also, I gotta say, being very patient. Uh, I gotta say, I gotta give it to Gornich here, being very patient in this gap where he didn't expose his army to just Psy Storm bait is what it comes down to. And I think that was really critical. Checking the upper right hand corner, making sure there's nothing there to impede an expansion, which I assume we're going to see a drone moving there in the near future. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. It looks like we also see oh, already a drone in position, actually, sorry, at the nine o'clock base to be built. Jane going to peek up here uh, once again, but I'm almost wondering if he's going to try to uh, choose another angle of attack. And this is actually, I still feel like this is plenty of Hydralisks uh, to deal with this as long as, ooh, is it, as long as he's able to die, uh, to dodge the storm. That's one thing with the current meta is, is those High Templar just feel like such a weakness. 
such a weakness in this space. And you can see Gornich actually moving those Mulisks around, just checking the, the right hand side, going for more economic. Ooh, Sight Storming his own observers, which is also going to be difficult in dealing with these lurkers. Uh, Gornish still hasn't taken the nine o'clock. Uh, keep in mind, it looks like he's just content to go ahead and deny that three. And Jayun starting, yeah, getting mined out at his main does need to think about going going ahead and taking additional expansions rather than cracking his opponent and getting advantageous trades there. Uh, going to go ahead and check the upgrades. Looks like level two weapons, level one armor, but level two weapons the opposite side, so still a bit of an upgrade advantage for Jayun. Love this play from Gornich. Just trying to sneak, even if he's not getting the, looks like he lost some needles there, even if he's not getting the high Templar kills, what he is doing is he's keeping Jayun on his toes and letting him know that he can't just freely move his army around, that he can't just positionally uh, bully his way around the map. Single Zealot there trying to disrupt in the upper right-hand corner, but looks like Gornich is going to go ahead and be in position to deal with that. A couple Overlords, I think they're just misrallied, going to go ahead and get taken out. Uh, midfield as well on Gornich's side, but Gornich at 50 drones is about 20, looks like a, what, once, yeah, 20 supply behind. I'm not sure that he's all that concerned, however. Nine o'clock base uh, going up, because this is a scary army, but this is actually scary, a bit exposed. Hydralix and Mutalix out in the field coming from the right, and yeah, he's just going to have to cancel and let that go. Um, I like what Jayun's doing here, pushing out, using that army to go ahead and establish map control and go ahead and try to take this space. Gornish actually a bit supply capped. I'm assuming I missed some uh, Corsair killing some overlords somewhere around here, but both armies dancing around each other. This army from Gornish is just going to get annihilated, especially if it's coming in piecemeal like this. So, Gor so Jayun actually, I like what he's doing here. He's going to go ahead and establish additional bases and deny Gornich any additional expansions himself. Upper right hand base is being uh, built, but Gornich kind of playing uh, both sides of the map. He's got his army in between. He's just trying to pick off what he can, particularly those soft high Templar, um, moving his army, not engaging uh, in the field where it would be disadvantageous, and go ahead and, and going ahead and trying to establish either the upper right hand corner base or this inside three. And I like that he's drawn this this army across, and Jayun, and he's going to go ahead and and plop some lurkers to go ahead and get that base while Jayun's army is out of position. And Jayun trying to sweep around, find what he can, but not Gornish really isn't giving him a lot. Looks like uh, Dark Templar moving that uh, up into that upper right hand corner. We'll see if it can sneak around and get some damage. Trying to keep an eye on the mini map to make sure I can catch something. And Jayun going for a two pronged attack. First of all, Dark Templar doing some damage in that upper right hand corner. Looks like some units are headed that way, but he's going for another attack into this nearby fourth base. Nice size storms here uh, behind that zealot wall. Observer gets taken out, but that's okay. He's got another observer behind. Beautiful size storms on those hydralis on the low ground. And Gornich does does not have the army position. Didn't have it to deal with it. it looks like those uh, zealots going to sweep around. Um, they do die to those lurkers, but they have already, they're doing a lot of damage and killing a lot here in this base. It looks like uh, James still keeping the army size advantage isn't able to quite move up and we're seeing kind of a late that wish that defiler was here earlier looks like consume is just finally coming online it's not even researched yet so there's no dark swarm to assist with this but the observers are gone critically for jayun so where he might have been able to take out a hatchery or even establish this high ground and get some soft overlord kills on top of it he's not going to be able to get a lot else and might lose these very valuable high templar two that loses one to the zergling on retreat dragoons regrouping but what Jayun has managed to do in the meantime is he's managed to go ahead and establish this clock base, get this mineral only as well. But Gornich, in kind, has gone ahead and taken this three clock base. Some Dragoons coming from the opposite side, but again, no observers in position. It looks like he's just going to end up losing these Dragoons. Upper right hand corner. Um, I probably missed something here. Yep, Psy Storm. <laughs> like something's happening i missed it uh i want to get a look at the the drone probe count here but it looks like there's a psi storm at the 12 o'clock base i could sense it at the diggity sense that something was happening on the map um six o'clock base it looks like they're gonna maybe try to sweep around i think he's gonna wait for some drones to get established here before he goes for additional storms out in the field and i like what jayun is doing he's with the units he's got out in the field he's trying to push around while he gets his own economy up keep gornich uh, on the back foot force him to produce units rather than drones well, i guess i'm not sure that matters at this stage ignore that comment that's a diggity has not been casting in a while comment some overlords moving the way across, but it looks like he is going to be able to get this soft target of that upper right-hand base. Um, kind of curious if this overlord's ever going to be able to capitalize and do some 
uh, something in that corner. James spreading his units back out. He knows that he can go ahead and take that out with what's left. Is worried about a counterattack, perhaps. Um, or maybe he might try to swing around and deal with, uh, it looks like a drone not mining it, uh, deal with this 3 o'clock base. So re-engaging the middle, playing a little bit timidly, uh, timidly there. Hive is up for Gornish. He does have Defiler Tech out. Looks like he is uh, getting that Plague out. Plague so good against everything uh, Protoss. And this is where Jaehyun really takes off again. I feel like sometimes he'll lag in that middle game. Mostly because I feel like what happens, this is me just interpreting uh, Jaehyun's plays. I feel like he gets ahead. You can see that the plan's been executed. And then he has to kind of regather himself and figure out what he's executing from there and respond a bit more to what his opponent's doing. And so sometimes I feel like he'll get really far ahead uh, and then have a bit of a weak mid-transition to late game. And maybe that's just what happens with the races. He can comment on that uh, or not. But then I feel like once he just gets back in that groove, he, he just macros like a beast. And just his multitasking is just incredible and is really fun to watch uh, live on stream, by the way. Highly recommend it. By the way, check out both their streams in the community resource list. Both of them, in particular, their tutorial content is fantastic. Gornich, um, although I don't think Gornich has streamed in quite some time. And check them both out again on BSL. Some Zealots sneaking in that upper right-hand corner. Going to go ahead and take out a couple Zerglings where they can. Looks like he, if I missed it, Jayun was able to take out that upper right-hand base. Apologies for that. He's going to try to establish this bottom left-hand corner. We do have an Overlord that might be able to see that as it comes around. But Jayun running amok now. He did have a significant supply lead, so he was able to get away with that. Um, Zealots going to go ahead and run up that ramp. Going to be able to take out the initial Lurkers. These creep colonies warping in, warping in, uh, creeping in. What is it? What's the equivalent of warping in for Zerg? Just being built? Just being built here, but it is not going to be enough. I think Jayun is going to be able to clean up this corner. The Defiler coming in far too late. There is a Dark Swarm, but there's enough Zerglings and an Archon where I'm not sure that it's going to be, uh, where it's not going to, where it's going to, it isn't going to matter. That's the word I'm trying to get out there. Uh, Lurkers do pretty well against Archons and Zealots, which is why it can be very valuable, valuable particularly because Dragoons, uh, do well against lurkers, and then when dragoons can't do anything with the dark swarm, doesn't matter. But doesn't. Uh, I will get better at this. I'll get back and practice. Trust me on this, guys. I will get back and practice. Three o'clock base getting cleaned out, but not before it was taken out. We are going to see it caught at this time. Oh, a scourge! Is he going to get it? Second scourge hits before any storms uh, were landed, and Gornich actually keeps. Uh, looks like he is going to lose a little bit of mining time because he had to move those drones around, but doesn't lose anything to the side storm overall. But if we look at the overall count of bases, main and natural are expended for Jayun. It looks like the inside three is still mining, but it is mineral only. Six o'clock base is mining, and it looks like we're moving up to four bases versus essentially three bases, and not even that. So main is basically mined out. So we got one, one and a half, I would say. This isn't a lot. So two, two and a half um, mining versus Jayun's four, which is going to give Jayun a significant uh, significant advantage. And Jayun, you can just see, is running around the middle of the map, just absolutely uh, in complete map control at this stage. Level three weapons, level two armor. Going to compare that opposite side. We do have level two armor. Uh, looks like level two weapons uh, for the Zerglings on the ground. Things not looking good for Gornish, I'm going to have to say. He's mostly relying on Zerglings, and I think what he's going to try to do is just rely on the Zerglings, both to spot the army, try to clear things up, maybe do some positional counterattack. We'll see. But this is the big problem for Gornish right here. This is a nice established front for Jayun, and this is a nice leisurely base that he can take uh, from an inside uh, protected position. And really what you want at this stage as a Zerg is you want to have Lurkers out in the field. You don't want it to be Zealots versus Zerglings because Zealots will outscale Zerglings even with the, uh, well, with cra as I say that, I see a bunch of Zealots not doing particularly well against the Zerglings that were there. Sorry if there was a bump on the mic there. Another drop. Missed the drop. It looks like there is um, a good size storm there <laughs> as I miss it. I will catch these things in the future. Trust me, people. Uh... Is he going to be able to get out too? That would be amazing. Uh, gets another storm, mostly whiffs. Going to lose the High Templar and not even catch Zerglings there. But point being, at this stage of the game, what you really want as a Zerg player is, is you want, well, really Ultralisks and Defilers everywhere. But you want those higher tier tech units to deal with the Zealots um, and the Archons that are being fielded by your Protoss opponent. And right now, there's just not a lot of uh, gas for Gornich to produce those higher tier tech units that he wants to. It looks like he is able to get an Observer out. Ooh, nice Storms from the left. I think this army is going to get cleaned up and a good Plague as well. 
So not quite batched up, but I feel like this is a trade that Jaehyun can afford to make at this stage. He can go ahead and expend this army. He can go ahead and lose this army and rebuild it and keep throwing himself at Gornich as long as he keeps these bases from mining um, and getting up and established and keeps these bases uh, defended in the bottom left. Uh, I think he's going to be in a superior position once he is able to get kind of a full unit count and gathering out. So it looks like he's regathered. He's looking for a staged attack here. Going up into the ramp position can be a little bit difficult. I love what Gornish is doing with these Scourge because he's planting these Overlords in position and then just having a single Scourge. It looks like a Dark Templar doing work um, in the other corner. And he's got that single Scourge to take out that Observer. To make those lurkers even more effective looks like the observer in position to deal with this but again yeah this is the kind of defense you want nice ice storm catching a lot of those zerglings catching a lot of the lurkers as well additional size storm and more units just getting melted here the one thing that late game zerg does have for them though is once you get that crackling upgrade you can start pouring out those cheap zerglings and they will clean up all manner of protoss army particularly with swarm and plague for a second there, I thought we might see Gornish taking that base, but it looks like those are just circlings that are established to try to do some protection. I'm wondering if I missed a drop on the opposite corner. I don't think so, though. Uh, Jayun, uh, let's see where, what's going on with this base. Reavers now. So he's going to go ahead and go for some Reaver harassment out in the field. Gornich has managed to catch up and supply a significant amount of that supply, though, is in drones and in mostly uh, defensive units. So the question is, is, is Jayun going to be able to get the better trades out of this mid-game? And really, I think this, this base right here, whoever manages to get control of this base at the 3 o'clock position, um, I have a feeling that's going to be critical. This is just diggity game sense uh, from years past. We'll see what happens. It's going to be Zergling on Zealot with Reaver support for a bit. I like the Reavers because that really helps neutralize the power of that Dark Swarm and also just does absolute incredible damage to everything that Zerg wants to field. That being the Zerglings with the crack, uh, Crackling upgrade, the uh, Ultralisks that sometimes you'll see fielded if Gornish could get enough gas to do it, um, and of course the Lurkers underneath the Swarm. But with the Plague, those Reavers are very fragile, getting taken out. Looks like the um, High Templar getting taken out as well. Ugh, never mind, one sneaks out. So Gornish able to Swarm. Jayun has managed to establish this bottom left-hand base, has managed to do a little bit of harassment. I love that this high temp wow, this Dark Templar has 16 kills, and I've missed the vast majority of them. Apologies. I'm going to name this guy Fred, because he deserves a name. I can't think of another name. Still getting more kills. Fred going in for the blood. Because when you get this many kills and you, you didn't get your camera time, first of all, you deserve camera time, uh, Dark Templar. I'm wondering if I should get it. I'm going to leave it at this. I shouldn't have done that because I don't know what the baseline uh, camera positioning is or how to get it back there. Gordon is going to go ahead and try to take this base. His main is mined out. Um, his natural is mined out. That third base uh, is mined out. He's still barely mining out of this base, but it is mineral only. And he's just now taking gas here. So he's got a bit of gas in the bank, but he's kind of running on fumes. So Jayun does have an opportunity to do some action here. Jayun running on, uh, I think, a couple gas himself. Yep running basically on three bases. So again, as long as he keeps up with his macro, he should have the overall advantage. Plus, he's got uh, maxed out upgrades, still working on the shield upgrades underneath. Needs to be careful. And again, I love Gornich's um, Scourge, where he's just had these Scourge out uh, to just snipe those. Or, and you can just see how much, how frustrating that's been for Jayun to deal with. I'm not sure that it makes a difference because there's just not a huge amount of lurkers out in the field. Maybe with enough Psystorm, Storm, it, it won't matter. And it looks like the zealots, and almost it's kind of funny because it, it, there's almost a convergence in late game PVZ where you have the zealots that are basically acting as the cracklings on the opposite side. Hydra is able to deny that that three o'clock expansion once again. And Jayun again looking for opportunities to kind of sneak around. This is where I wish I had someone else doing the observing for me that can go ahead and get all these uh, background counts and catch all the action I'm missing. Maybe I can arrange that in the future zealots going ahead and cleaning out mostly just trying to deny bases good spread on these zealots lurkers still uh weren't weren't burrowed yet good size storms as well and the zealots going to be able to go ahead and back off i think jane still wants to establish this Ooh, scourge going to be able to take out that shuttle which is going to make those reavers more vulnerable but i feel like mm, just kidding with the zealots not there to support those zerglings did manage to take down one reaver and it looks like they're gonna get a second 
And the probe's gonna be able, wow, the probe's gonna sneak in and get taken out as well. So this is gonna turn into a longer macro game than I anticipated, because I was expecting one player or the other to kind of sneak into the, I was honestly expecting Jayun to kind of sneak in, be able to produce a lot off the superior base count and get kind of a stranglehold on this match. Instead, with Zealots running around the field, Gornich has managed to, uh, through just sheer force of will, it almost feels like, take those upper right hand bases, taking down the Nidus Canal, lots of those Zerglings aren't going to do anything with that dorks, <laughs> that Swarm support, because that is all Archons and all Zealots, and they do a lot of damage under it. But that's still a lot of Zerglings swarming out to try to defend this base. You can hear a lot of Zealots dying underneath that cloud. Hydalisks coming up to try to support. Dark Swarm doesn't help them with that effort, though. That's where Dark Swarm becomes a liability. And Gornich's army getting wiped out. Drones fleeing for their lives. Archons dealing with the flank. Finally, some lurkers in position and no observer to provide any form of support. The swarm's still sitting there, and this army is going to have to back off. But that's leaving this uh, this upper right-hand corner a bit exposed if Jane can swing around or get something up there. Looks like I'm missing another drop. Good. Just catching the latter end of that. Killing all of the drones here at that mineral expansion. Looks like he uh, didn't drop there and didn't get any, uh, but he, trying to swing around. Ugh. Gornich, I gotta say, the Gornich Scourge have been the unsung heroes. I wish I could name each and every one of them because they have killed so many observers, taken down so many shuttles, and really just been you can say, a thorn in Jayun's side this entire match. And I almost want to say that they have kept Gornich in this match. Gornich sitting at 140 supply, Jayun with a significant advantage in that regard. Um, but. But I want to say, Gornich just clawing his way back into these matches, and he refuses to die. Um, and still taking out observers and things out in the field. Lone Zealot chasing down drones here and there. Um, right here, even though Jayun is maxed, I still don't want to count Gornich out. Just because looking at his base, he's establishing everything upper right. Um, he's put up such a magnificent, uh, magnificent, magnificent defense, generally. In this match, it looks like Zerglings swarming in, observers pushing in inside nine. Shuttle getting taken out once again, which is going to make those Reavers vulnerable. Reaver getting taken out. Archon sweeping up around some beautiful storms, though, on the reinforcements. And I think this might be an overwhelming force. And that I, James should be able to take these hatcheries out despite whatever reinforcements come because he's sitting on the high ground now. Good size storm on this patch of Hydralisks down below. But Gornich swarming some additional reinforcements, but those are reinforcements I think he wanted to have established at his peripheral bases, not dealing with a base that he long, uh, that should have been held long ago. Finally able to clean this up just through just sheer swarms of macro zerglings. So one, but Jayun getting some damage done, and I still feel like that's a better trade for Jayun because the longer he can keep pushing these trades out uh, and keeping his army count up, and keeping his army out in the field, I'm, what I'm really waiting for to see, and I'm wondering if I missed um, some drops here in the background, what I'm really waiting to see is Jayun going for one of those attacks and just having kind of a peripheral force moving into this section as Gornish's uh, units are out of position. It looks like Gornish just desperately trying to throw out a, a counterattack. Honestly, I haven't seen Gornish on the offensive. I'm trying to uh, probably, if maybe you guys have seen on the mini-map somewhere out in the field. I haven't seen Gornish on the offensive once this match. Just because of the amount of aggression coming out from Jayun. Regathering in the middle of the map, once again headed towards max supply. Gornich sitting around 150. And the Zealots chasing down those Zerglings. And this is really the critical thing is, is yeah, can he continue to split this army? Oh, catching the Zerglings a little bit out of position. Archon's moving forward. The Lurker's not yet burrowed. There, the Dark Swarm down. Reaver's sweeping, trying to look for an opportunity. They are going to get on top of those Lurkers, take them out. More units streaming in from the right. Looks like they're getting the matchup they want. The Hydralisk on the Archons. Um, more Scourge, and Jayun's army melted. I got to give it to Gornich as well. Is a lot of these armies in composition and in positioning. I like The math in my brain goes like, Jayun should be getting the better part of these exchanges, but Gornich with his micro, with his army positioning, able to take it out. But as I say that, it looks like there was a Reaver drop. Exactly what I was looking for out of uh, Jayun. Looks like there's a Reaver drop, able to take out some of those drones. So I think what may be happening here is the end of the line for Gornich as his drone lines have been decimated. I'm not sure, or at least his mining drone lines have mostly been decimated. It looks like actually he might have escaped the majority of them in the upper right corner. Jane continuing, has double his supply. 
but Gornich is making him fight for absolutely every inch. Every time it seems like I'm like, okay, Jalen's going to break through once again. The streams of Zerglings and streams of Defilers and streams of Hydralisks come crashing in from both directions and just seem to be able to just push the tide back. Very impressive defense from Gornich all the way around. I am just astounded that he's even like props that he's in this game. And let's see if he can swing it around. If he can keep this up, get these drone counts up and just get an established army somehow or maybe a back uh, a back end drop or catch Jayun out of position maybe he can swing back in this game Jayun, in the meantime needs to close this out before he ends up mining out um, and isn't able to establish an additional base zealots again trying to uh, wow getting on top of those lurkers and that's the exchange that gornich wants all those lurkers are getting on a, those straight lines of zealots where they get wiped out but Looks like the Lurkers are going to be taken care of by those Zealots. There's still some Zealots standing with Observers. They're starting to move into that soft operational base. Not a lot of defense. Just a single Sunken Colony. Again, the Scourge staying on top of those Observers. Keeping that count low so the Lurkers can do their work. Unfortunately, no Lurkers on the field to speak of. And this 3 o'clock base is going to get breached. Looks like the Zealots were taking care of the drones uh, on that corner line. And Gornich needs to defend this base now. If he does not defend this corner, that is going to be game. As soon as uh, Jayun's able to get up this ramp, that is going to be all she wrote. Zergling streaming from this back corner. Is Jayun going to be able to, to end it here? Psystrom's in the back corner. Gornich cutting off reinforcements, able to take out the High Templar that were trying to reinforce. Force the Reavers back and Gornish with a furious defense of Zerglings. Continuing to pummel the reinforcements of Jayun. More units coming from that corner. It looks like that hatchery is finally going to be taken out. But wow, the defense from Gornish in the, in the corner in the meantime. Elevating the Reavers up to finally hit this drone line. The drones in panic. Oh, you got a feel for these drones in this upper right-hand corner. Seeing those scarabs explode in their face unbelievable and wow this has been a fantastic match i gotta say this is a great one to come back to i hope you guys are enjoying it just pummeling back and forth i think jayun is gonna take it here i'm almost expecting a gg any second but gornish using every last mineral he has hoping uh to defend it out he does have a single lurker to hit those reinforcements as they're sweeping in, but that's a that's an upper right-hand base that is gone. The only mining base here is at the 3 o'clock. It's almost expended, mineral only otherwise. Gornich um, sitting at 30 drones, which is not where you want to be sitting at this late in the game. But he's going to go, wow, scrappy. This reminds me of uh, Hasuab's style play, where he's just going to scrap it out and fight the last unit. Uh, still streaming in with more reinforcements as long as he has something to fight with he is going to fight i love seeing it and but jayun has got to taste that blood in the water trying to hold it out and i think yeah once once we see this uh grouping uh wiped out i expect to see a gg any second now that's <laughs> like you'll see it here and gornich still fighting it out but i gotta say at this stage whether gornich is ggying or not that is going to be the match some zerglings trying to to do what they can here and that's three o'clock base, but Jayun's going to be able to get that up. He's still mining out of everything in this bottom left-hand corner. He still has a little bit here left in this mineral only. I think what Gornich is hoping, I think what he's desperately clinging to is that Jayun might have been, because Protoss units are expensive, that maybe he was mined out and maybe he would be able to, to reset. And I think there was just like a gap there. Um, GG from Gornich at that stage. I think when she realized that, oh, nope, that base hadn't been expended, uh, that was all she wrote. Excellent play from both these guys. Again, look for them in BSL. And these are these are the guys to beat. So uh, top 20 players. Check out BSL casts. Uh, it's good to be back. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Special thanks to uh, Jayun who actually got me this replay. If anyone else wants to be high, I really want to highlight Gornich here in the near future. If anyone else wants to be highlighted, let me know. Let me get your replays and put it up here. Check out their streams in the community replay link. Uh, my Patreon's down below. Please donate to the community at large as well, particularly Tasteless and Artosis in this time. As in this time frame, if you're catching this in the future, ASL English broadcast was recently halted. And thank you everyone for listening. It is a pleasure to be back.